gotta get some island loving, baby. That's right. All right, Phil, but get out of here. The plane is ready on the runway. Now get! Dr. Pinkerton, are there any tickets left? We got here as fast as we could. Yes, well, well what is this about the vacation giveaway? Oh, gentlemen, uh, I mean, colleagues. There comes a time when one must take a gamble at greatness, even if it means sacrificing the many lives of everyone around him. Well, Dr. Pinkerton. What? You're thinking about gambling. I, uh, wait a minute. What do you, what do you mean, sacrifice? Duh. Dr. Pinkerton, if you're planning on organizing a modern crusade, I suggest we use Filbert. Second it. Mm, silence! Now then, computer, the map. As you may know, gentlemen, the surface of the Earth contains many energy points. These points are connected by a grid called anyone, anyone? Uh, ley lines. Getting laid! This is a plan I can get behind! I like this plan! No, idiot! Any grade A charlatan like Dr. A. Rackton here mm. can tell you that ley lines are critical fissures to the very molten core of this miserable planet. It is my belief that an energy beam directed equally at the four corners would split open the fissures, unleashing a power the likes of which science has never seen! Tonight, gentlemen, I intend to test this bold theory by splitting the Earth in twain! <laughs> yes, once the Earth is cracked in two, we shall see how quickly they bow to the cog! Ah! Dr. Pinkerton. What? I strongly urge you to reconsider your plan to crack the earth apart. Oh? Why? That's where I keep all my stuff. And I'm also quite allergic to death. Death? You of all people should know what I have to say about death. And if you don't know, then I highly advise buying our album, Free Brains and Dead Bodies, available at finer record stores worldwide. Now then, to execute my great plan, I have sent members of the Consortium of Genius to the proverbial four corners of the Earth! The four points of maximum power! The Earth's a sphere, numbskull. It doesn't have corners. Silence, Trumbot! Get out of the way! Now then, Dr. Cornelius Smurlington is currently stationed at the Great Pyramid in Giza. Dr. Wolfgang Amadeus Wissenschaft is stationed in the Antarctic. Dr. A. Pentatonic is stationed at Stonehenge in Wales, England. And Philbert Stodgrass, junior scientist in training, is stationed at Easter Island. Why, you could call it a web of geniuses. A worldwide web. <laughs> Catchy name, that. Trademark that for me, please, Dr. A. Rachned. Ah, uh, Dr. Pinkerton, I think that name's already- Silence! What matters is this. If this plan succeeds, it means that I, Dr. Milo T. Pinkerton III, shall succeed in further altering the course of human history. Forever! Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Pinkerton. You seem pretty sure of yourself for someone who has failed so many times in a row. Hey, Drumbot, I'll bet you five dollars that Dr. Pinkerton's new plan fails spectacularly. What, are you kidding? I'd rather keep my money. Colleagues, I find your lack of faith sublimely irritating. I mean, yes, I great plan, yes. Yeah, I like it too. Excellent. I knew you'd see it my way. Now then, computer! Yes, Dr. Pinkerton? Compute probability of current plan succeeding. Analyzing. Probability of Dr. Pinkerton's plan succeeding is 0%. What? Computer! Explain analysis! Failure of Dr. Pinkerton's plan conditioned by existence of popular ska band fatter than Albert. Albert? Albert Einstein? Albert Gore? Weird Albert Yankovic? Alex Scramuza? What Albert are you referring to? You've never heard of Fatter Than Albert? Enumerate their credentials, please. They're only the best guy band in town. Well, I've never heard of them. 
Computer, locate and display local ska band fatter than Albert. Yes, Dr. Pinkerton. Beat. But ultimately of no import. Colleagues, we must place fatter than Albert on a little diet. A life loss diet! <laughs> yes, excellent. We can command the other geniuses via our cellular satellite televideo phones. Uh, Dr. Pinkerton, mm. I'm running kind of low on minutes on my cellular satellite televideo phone. Silence! Gentlemen, to the COG air car! Doctor, see, you forgot your thingy. Turn that noise off, you two! I must check in with the other members of the Consortium of Genius and make sure they are ready! After we dispose of those dance hall dilettantes, I shall command the other colleagues of the Consortium to commence with my cataclysmic criminal caper! <laughs> Would you cool it with the alliterations already? You're making my terminate! Silence! Now then, come in, Dr. A. Pentatonic. Dr. A, are you receiving me? Seems to be nobody there. Ah, you see? Your plan is already cursed. Don't you know Stonehenge is reputedly guarded by magic sprites, pixies, and demons? Sprites and pixels? And demons. Oh my! For your sake, you'd better be talking about computer graphics, Dr. Harry A. Arachnid. Where is that music coming from? Coming from here. The tale is true. supernatural creature. Yes, you. As a noted scientist, I don't condone belief in your ilk, and at any rate, you're in the way, so push off, why don't you? <gasps> nice costumes, f***. We 
for 20 years of dungeon master. This is sacred ground, you You call yourselves doctors? You wouldn't know what to do if you had a roll of duct tape and a hamster. I'd rather a leprechaun than play doctor with you. Ah, excellent. Dr. A. Pentatonic has moved his laser into position. Report in, Dr. A. Pentatonic. Yeah, I'm over here, Pinkerton. Is the laser in place? Yeah, the laser is in place, but I'm getting some really heavy readings out here coming from the stone circle. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. Hey, uh, Pinkerton, um, we got a little uh, developing situation here. I'm not quite sure what. Oh, boy. Well, as soon as we eliminate these musicians alleged to be fatter than Albert, then there will be no one to stop us this time! Roadkill! Men's and women's fashion clothing, shoes, and accessories. Roadkill! Huge hardcore belt buckle selection. Roadkill! Leathers, helmets, and jewelry for bikers. Roadkill! Hundreds of rock and roll t-shirts. Roadkill! Cool baby clothes for the little metalheads. Roadkill! Skulls, skulls, and more skulls. Roadkill! Located in the French Quarter at 903 Decatur Street. Roadkill! Buy or die! Man, is it also the instruments? Dude, it's the instruments. Let's go to CNM Music Center. Starting a band? Then you need new instruments. CNM Music is where you need to go for everything that rocks. Check out our huge selection of guitars, drums, basses, keyboards, even lights and PA equipment. Make CNM Music your one stop for all your band's needs. CNM Music is located at 2515 Williams Boulevard in Kenner. See musiccenter.net for other locations. And if you tell them Ingrid Flatstein sent you, you get 10% off of a bag of strings.
It's uh, it's rare that we get to play a show in Metairie where there's room on the stage for us. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. Or where there is a stage. <laughs> so uh, we have a booth at the Comic Con. Clay's there if you want to go say hi to him tomorrow. Is that a hint? Can we please have a water for Kyle? Can we get a round of applause for Kyle? Sexiest drummer. Well, that robot drummer is pretty hot. The cog drummer. But that water, that that robot doesn't need water. But Kyle does, so please, if you can grab a water. just turned a year old last week I think we don't have any here though I don't know what's going on either but if you're at the con tomorrow man pick one up
What the fuck do you say to the rest of the do you with the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest the rest of the rest of the rest of the rest of the the rest of the the Look like a drink, cause you been in the kids You can find it in the kids, you need to drink What the fuck do you decide to run something straight? Do it with the new and got to run back in the club? Do you do it all we do it now and never ride? Yeah, but do it all we do it now and nobody can die Do it with the kids, you know it's just a pill If you need rape, you can go and do it down If you need rape, and it gives you I was just still my another one. And you do it, even though it's good, yeah. And you do it, even though it's good, yeah. And it gives you I just still my another one. 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 Like a copy was yeah, buddy. Did anybody meet uh, Darth Vader today? Is that Darth Vader guy? No one met Darth Vader. No. He's only Darth Vader for like 90 seconds. Oh, you met him? Yeah. Was he nice? I heard he likes hot wings. Anybody that likes hot wings, I don't know. I have no idea. What do you want to play? A ska song. Sure. So one time we uh, went to Jazzland and uh, Clay got arrested. And uh, <laughs> this song's about the time Clay got arrested. Don't 
the price, the price that I had to pay Yeah, they do my business, I don't mean that they are bad If we travel around the country, all the battles in the bad If we send a lot of letters, if we send a couple of kids Battles, I'll be single, they're open, they're free We can be here, we can find a bunch of regular, we can leave watching out there, there's a lot more coming up. What? 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 All of you people watching out there on the internet, we've got a lot more coming up. Tomb of Nick Cage is next as we celebrate the Mighty Con After Party. See you in about 20 minutes. My name is Farrah Hutkins and I'm Mr. Cronotus, a uh, trumpet player, singer, and occasional keyboard player in one or both versions of the car. At a show at Twyropa, I approached one of the band members and asked if they needed a trumpet player, and I was told that they already had one. A couple of years later, I was told that they needed one anyway, and somehow ended up playing in the band, and I'm not really sure how I ended up staying in it for as long as I did. I really loved the one chord gig that we had at, um, what was it called, the, the Cyprus, where um, we were so powerful, so insanely powerful, uh, that with a single chord, we blew the PA 
and uh, were unable to give the normal performance uh, that we would have. Instead, we gave a performance of approximately one half second. I believe it was the shortest gig ever, as a matter of fact. Right now, my character is uh, searching for parts. He's 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 stuck in the early 21st century, and he's trying to get out because he doesn't particularly enjoy it. He tolerates it, but he doesn't enjoy it. And he's basically pilfered all of the parts that he can from Pinkerton's workshop, especially now that the time door is more or less functional again. And so he's trying to acquire parts elsewhere. He acquires both mechanical parts and also human parts uh, for reasons that are as yet unknown. Born in the South is probably my favorite one, even though the beginning of it was frequently cut off by Drumbot, who was just so eager to get on with things. Uh, Cronotus and Drumbot have something of an acrimonious relationship. I would say that 20 years is an insanely long time for a rock band to be together, unless your name is Getty Lee. So uh, here's to outliving all of the members of Rush. Hi, I'm Jeff King. And I played Dr. Ray Penetton, both versions. I remember finding out about the cog from Chris Flatman. He told me of this band he'd been subbing with and uh, about all the crazy experiments and visual gags and props used and that it was this mad scientist thing and all, what have you. And uh, if you know anything about Chris Flatman, he has a tendency of embellishing the truth. So I was quite surprised to find out that it was everything he had said and more. I finally joined up in the COG after playing some bit parts from time to time. Um, sometime I think in 1999, and uh, the first gig was at Movie Pictures, I believe. Had a lot of fun and stayed on for about four or five years and got to be on two albums. Uh, my fondest memory would have to be when I got to play Dr. A. Pentatonic as a mass murderer and chase uh, Cosmo and drew Blaylock around and, and kill them. Uh, it was a lot of fun playing a psycho killer. Guess the set. My favorite song would be Destroy Old Things. Uh, I found the old lyrics Lewis had written a long time ago and I started writing something inspired by Tool and the Deftones and tried to take Cog in a little bit different vein where it wasn't just so ha-ha funny but maybe a little bit of social commentary uh, thrown in there, but I also enjoyed some of the covers we played live, like uh, 2112 uh, by Rush and uh, Alice Cooper's Billion Dollar Babies. Those were a lot of fun to play live. I guess my characters, uh, I guess the fake Dr. A is probably rotting somewhere in a federal penitentiary right now, um, and the other, the real Dr. A, Knowing him, he's probably getting drunk on a beach somewhere, um, living with a porn star. I'm pretty sure that's what I read on Facebook. But anyway, Todd, congratulations on 20 years. We'll see you down the road. Bye-bye. My name is Ashley Shabankre, and I played Nurse Anthrax. I joined this band initially. I had met everyone, more specifically Lewis, because the local skank recorded our first album in The Secret Lab. And from there, I played my very first gig at Voodoo Fest, played trombone, stuck on a blonde wig, and here I am. <laughs> we were filming at House of Shock, and it was my first time ever in there, and I hate, 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 hate horror films. Like, scared, gonna piss my pants if I see any sort of gore. So, <laughs> um, we filmed in there for the first start of the COG spinoff, and you know, they're just going through it, and I, even though nothing was in there, I almost started to cry and have a panic attack because I was just so freaked out. And I was just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but you would have had no idea had I, had I, like, otherwise, if you saw the video. <laughs> I think that she decided that evil genius being a Russian was a little too much for her. So she scaled back, and then she started working at a glitter factory. And quite frankly, she's making a killing right now. It's just glitter galore. It's filling up the place. I mean, like, she is just trying to take over the world one step at a time, one little piece of glitter. It's great. I adore evil is fun. 
I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. And I think it was like the icing on the cake for me. They would give me a sign and I would just like hold it in the wrong direction sometimes just to add to like the ditziness of my character. I mean, she loves animals and puppies and quite frankly, turning a sign upside down to say fun, but it really says N-U-F. I mean, like, what? what is that? That's just ridiculous. <laughs> you guys steal some brains for me? Go into the crowd, give as many lobotomies as possible. Happy 20th! Hi, uh, my name is Drew Blaylock. Um, I've played various uh, characters in COG. i played uh, Maximilian David Strutton. And most lately, I have been social sleeps in ditch of the Cumberland's oppression of the Jewish scientists. With an article versus the world, we had played several shows with COG during the early incarnations. And slowly but surely, I got involved and I became really, really close friends with uh, Milo Pinkerton. And I would be tapped every once in a while to do this or that. And I really got sucked in about five years ago when I was asked to do a COG panel at CoastCon, and it was supposed to be me, Milo, and Filbert, and Filbert and Milo didn't show up. And that's kind of how uh, Social Sleeps and Ditch was uh, <laughs> invented, because we turned it into, they're not here, so we're just going to attack and talk about how evil the scientists are and all that kind of stuff. And four months later, after I'd rode a few gigs and been a tour with them, I came in as backup bassist, Max Destruction. I did a few photo shoots, and then I just started filling in here and there. And, you know, as Lewis says, there's no really leaving the cog no matter what you do. So here I am several years later, and uh, I still get called in to do certain shows and come and do guest spots and all that stuff. In fact, you know, I didn't even know, but I'm apparently guest spotted in the comic things are going on right now. <laughs> I would uh, think my favorite anecdote would have to be when the you know, streamlined version of the band, the torn version of the band, we went to uh, Steam World Steam Expo up in, you know, basically Detroit, Michigan. And there's just so many answers to say about that, but I think one of my favorite ones was when me and uh, the guitar player, Joe Pato, found this advertisement at a guitar center in Ohio for a death metal band, <laughs> and we called this guy up. It was like Lord Vlad or something like that. And we like proceeded to have like this 30 minute conversation about how we wanted to be in this death metal band with this guy. He's like, it's all about the black metal. Your soul has to be dark. And we're like, dude, our souls are so dark. It's not funny. <laughs> Sorry. I still think about that and laugh about it. My favorite song, I guess, you know, would be help, having to help write Fargonargle, because that was, you know, the story behind that's really funny, where we were just goofing off in Ramones and ended up coming up with Filbert's new song. But the most enjoyable song I ever play is when I'm up on stage with Dead Vigo, which is the upright bass, and we play Everyone Dies, because it's always a very fun song to play, and it's very, like, just mellow, and you can really get into it. I love you all to death, and that's why I hope you all die in a fire, but Joan of Arc style, because I want you to be set on fire, put out, think you're safe, and then set back on fire. Toodles. I'm Experiment F13. I played Joe Pano in the COG. Um, basically a amalgamation of body parts from dead guitar players to make one ultimate guitar player who was you know, hastily duct taped and bondo together. When Ed left, um, you know, Lewis tried to get in touch with Steve Vai, Eric Johnson, Joe Satriani. Couldn't get in touch with any of those guys. They were apparently all very busy. So, Billy told Lewis, I know this fella. He's, you know, a little tough to deal with, but he's also a kook. And he'd probably fit in with the rest of you guys. And uh, I was on a band-joining binge at the time. And I figured, you know, what's another notch in the belt? Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. And now, you know, that's how it came about. Taking the face paint off after the gigs and not being recognized was a lot of fun, you know, because then I'd have to pretend that, oh man, I, I missed him. I can't believe I missed the cog. Oh my God. And they're like, oh man, yeah, there was this crazy guy with this makeup all over his face. He was wild. Like, ah, I can't believe I missed it. Shucks. <laughs> There was plenty of them that I liked. I loved Plague, loved playing Black Plague. It was heavy. I'm a metal guitar player. Mallet, Mallet was great. Um, 
and I was also partial to they said I was mad and Middle Earth needs me mainly because you know I had a pretty active part in writing those two yep happy 20th is it now 20 years you guys might want to think about retiring um, hey Gil hey Meredith I'll have a good time <laughs> Are we done? Yeah. God, I need a smoke. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith Casabon. I'm not a real doctor, but I played one in COG from 1996 to 1998, Dr. Wolfgang Amadeus Wissenschaft. Well, I met Lewis in 1993. We both worked as sound engineers at University of New Orleans. Uh, learned I was, you know, a guitarist and that we're both geeks and that he was recording music. Uh, we decided it was just natural to work together. Uh, he was recording Die, Barney, Die. Needed a guitar track for it. Asked me if I wanted to do it, and I agreed. Uh, it was a blast. So three years later, when he asked me if I wanted to join the live version of COG he was creating, I definitely agreed, jumped at the chance, and history was made. I'm sure I have a memorable memory if it wasn't for the brain damage that uh, occurred when I was hit in the head with the scythe. Well, we recorded the video to Death to the Angel of Death. Um, CT was playing the, uh, the, the Angel of Death, and when he went to swing at Lewis, uh, let's just say I got caught in the backlash, and we had to stop filming to clean up the blood, and the, I literally had blood dripping down my, like my lab coat. Um, but it's definitely a story and, 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 and a fond memory. Where is Fish and Chef now? Well, as many of you know, he was abducted by a Yeti quite a few years ago. Uh, fortunately, he has recently escaped the, the clutches of the, uh, the horrible beast. Uh, now, I would suppose he's been uh, committed to a psychiatric facility and uh, has turned the tables and now is running the show for the better. Uh, favorite COG song? Well, I guess I'd have to say Death to the Angel of Death. I always enjoyed playing that, helped write it. Uh, it was always a fun song to play in live shows. Uh, of course, if it wasn't for that song, I wouldn't have the video of the non-memory that I have. And uh, I think I would say that's my favorite. Tw 20 years? Okay, well, good. C congratulations on 20 years. That's, that's an incredible accomplishment. And I'm really glad that I was a part of it and helped kick the whole thing off. Uh, Congratulations to all the colleagues in the band, all the fans, and uh, I hope this can go on for another 20 more. I am Chris Lennox, and I play Dr. Lester McLummox in the COG. I got a random phone call from Lewis one day, and um, I didn't call him back right away. He said he's in this band called the COG, and I YouTubed it and did some research, and it looked like a ridiculous amount of fun, so I called him back. and joined. One of my favorite things to think about, this it wakes me up in the middle of the night laughing sometimes. I was showing up at a gig and it was one of the first um, gigs for the steampunk version of COG. And I was crossing the street and Lewis pulls up right in front of me in his pickup truck and rolls down the window. He's in complete uh, Pinkerton the first regalia and just screams at me you know, hello sonny and I hadn't seen him in costume yet and so the first time I see him he's behind the wheel with a top hat and goggles and I, I just lost it it's probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen <laughs> my character doesn't really do anything per se ever um, except, you know, he, he hangs out at the pub and drinks a bit. Um, that's pretty much it. He's a typical Scott. I Have the Power is probably my favorite song to play. And listen to. I hope you're enjoying our 20th anniversary show, and I hope you all die. Hi, I'm Lauren Frederick, and I play Sinistra Cerebellum in the Consortium of Genius. Through the networking powers of Facebook, uh, my friend actually tagged me in a post that was asking for female singers, and at the time I didn't have much going on, so I went ahead and sent a message to Lewis, and I gave him every reason to not pick me to be the singer with my schedule and future plans and stuff, but I got sucked into it anyway, and I'm having a really good time. Well, um, since I'm new, 
I don't really have any funny anecdotes personally, but have you heard what these guys have been saying? I'm sure I'll have some stories in a couple of months. My favorite song to play is Bucket of Blood. Definitely. Right now, she's probably walking down an alley. Some guy's gonna come try to save her from, you know, the troubles of the night. And she'll punch him in the face. And then she'll beat him down. And then she'll probably take him back to the lab and dissect his brain. Have a great time. Enjoy the 20th anniversary. It's a really great band. And don't feel bad about getting a little weird, because we're going to get weird right with you. Hi, I'm Jim Fairchild, and I play Dr. Z in the COD. I met Lewis, and I uh, became a fan of the band, and I started helping out with some videos and stuff, and whenever they needed a bass player, they called me up and asked if I wanted to join. That was uh, January 2001. Been with them ever since. I really get a kick out of all these overly sensitive, self-important people that are offended by my character. You know, they want to be offended on behalf of whatever ethnic groups that they think that I'm making fun of. When in, in reality, you know, all my friends and family members that are actually members of these ethnic groups think that it's hilarious. They love it. So I just say, roll with it. Have fun. Dr. Z is fun, yes? I think still my favorite song to play is Battle of the Cog. I think he's kicking back with his harem with a couple hundred people running his cult offices in the next room over, trying to keep everything going to keep that schedule going to take over the world by means of religion. Hope everybody out there is enjoying our 20th anniversary and we're having fun on stage, so you have fun in the audience. I'm Tiffany Pollock and I play Dr. Formaldehyde Pinkerton. So I did an album with this band, The Round Pegs, at um, Ron Keller's studio. And um, he called me and asked me if I was interested in, in you guys. And I guess he had called y'all because y'all were looking for somebody. And so I went to Twist of Lime to see y'all play. And I brought my friend Cynthia and this sat through this god-awful metal band first. And then I saw you guys, and my friend Cynthia was just like, what the fuck are you thinking? These people are fucking weird. And uh, I thought that you guys were awesome. So... So I came and auditioned, and I sang Highway to Hell, and I landed the job. I played Voodoo Fest when I was very pregnant. And that was interesting. In platform patent leather stripper boots pregnant on stage it was very classy Formelda would be probably in her lab working on dead people right now or plotting against Milo or trying to swindle some rich scientist into marrying her and stealing all of his money or something along those lines my favorite song was all I want to do for sure the, the meatloaf wannabe song. I love that song so much. It's so awesome. I love the incestual undertones. It's so wonderfully wrong. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Cog. <laughs> My name is Edmond Muriel, and I play Dr. Harry A. Rachnid. I met Lewis in 1993. He told me about his band Cog. I went to their very first performance at the airport Cheriton, was it? Yeah, for, for some kind of sci-fi kind. Years and years later, yada, 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 he decided he needed a guitar player to fill a gig on the Gulf Coast. I decided, no, it was too much work because I saw the show and I knew what went into it. So I declined. A few months later, he called me back. I said, are you offering me a job? He said, yeah. So I said, okay, I'll do it. You got me. Okay, so uh, I was especially fortunate to be involved in COG during the time where we were doing COG TV to host local touring unsigned bands. And uh, of the episodes we did, I think my favorite was doing Rock City Morgus with Rick Slave from Rock City Morg, and uh, in which we did the lobotomy video in More Fun Comics, and we got to crawl around on the floor, chase him around, and then we actually went on location uptown around the, the bar The Saint, and ran up and down the streets at night acting like morons and watching Rick trip over garbage cans. That was, that was, that was pretty much fun. 
I always go back to Ice Cream. It's not one of the ones I, I helped develop, but I, I just I like to play that song. I, I don't know why. It's just simple. It's driving. It's, it's nasty and it's long. <laughs> what is Dr. A. Rachnid doing right now? Uh, some of you may not know. Some of you may know. Dr. A. Rachnid actually was not an evil scientist. Dr. A. Rachnid was much, much, much older than everyone else. He was a deposed demigod practiced Kandarian black magic. He was hiding out in the Consortium of Genius. So I would have to say that right about now, Dr. A. Rachnid allegedly has made a deal with an ancient alien race called the Anunnaki on the planet Nibiru. Some of you might know it as the 10th planet or planet X. And they seem to be having a little bit of trouble with large 12-legged spider-like creatures who feed mainly on reptilian-like hominids which is unfortunate for the Anunnaki because they happen to be reptilian-like hominids. It's also my belief that Arachnid is actually not exterminating these creatures, but he is, in fact, building an army. So, happy 20th anniversary to all my colleagues, and I would very much like to thank the fans for their support through the many years, and remember, boys and girls, button up your doors and windows before you go to bed tonight. Because Dr. Harry A. Rachnid just might be coming for you. Hi, I play Remy D, the lab technician for the Consortium of Genius. I first saw this band in 2005, a few weeks before Hurricane Katrina hit. They were opening up before the Rocky Horror Picture Show at Shamet Theater. And I walked in and I just saw the lab coats and the robot drummer and I was hooked. And I love these guys. So years later, it was 2011, I was writing for Offbeat Magazine, and I wrote an article on the Consortium of Genius. So Lewis and I kept in touch after that on Facebook, and then he contacted me about singing. So I started singing in 2011, and was with the band for two years. Oh my god, the taco. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> we played French Quarter Fest in 2012, and we had every intention of playing Taco Supremo, which is the other version of Mallet of Metal, and we were going to get our roadie Dustin to wear a taco costume for the number. And in the middle of the song, he wasn't on stage yet, so I look on the over off stage and he just holds it up and says, it won't fit. So I knew I had to make a very quick decision <laughs> of, am I going to don this costume in front of hundreds of people at French Quarter Fest? And sure enough, I did. And when you wear a taco costume, you can't go small. You have to be big and crazy and perfectly comfortable with making a complete ass of yourself in front of everybody. And I did, and it was wonderful. I can do anything now, because I was a taco. I'm partial to Tonight's Tonight because it's the first one that I recorded, and of course it's about the love of my life, Drumbot and I. And it's so cheesy and funny and wonderful, and there's so much innuendo and I have a lot of fun singing that one. Another fun one is Dance or Die. I've always been partial to that one because it gets me pumped. And that one's fun to sing and dance to also. Remy is plotting. She's biding her time with the champions of goodness. But at heart, she's just a sociopath. It's not going to be long before she sheds blood again. And she's waiting for the right time to take action because she's gonna it doesn't matter which side she's on she's gonna do what's best for her so she's plotting but she's also missing drumbot terribly happy 20th love you guys hello my name is chris flatman i'm most known as filbert snodgrass i also played ingve flatstein and i'm in steam cog and i'm sergeant shell shock in that the way I joined was I was actually asked to just fill in for a while. So I just filled in for three years or something like that. Um, and it was a really, really good time. And I didn't know I was having a good time. And I learned a lot about myself. I learned that I was a geek. One of my most memorable experiences was playing Dragon Con. Just being at Dragon Con is kind of like going to Disney World for the first time. It's really a lot of fun. I had a good time. I don't know how well we did. We did so-so, but it was still great. Um, another experience that I remember was while playing, having to desperately urinate. And while playing, going kind of behind a curtain 
still performing and urinating into a Budweiser beer bottle, which overflowed onto my hand and some equipment. And no one seemed to notice, except for Lewis, who was rather upset with me. But besides that, the show went great. Flat Steam made it. He's gone. Deal with it. Um, Filbert's never going away. Filbert's right here. <laughs> um, he could come out at any moment. In fact, if he actually does exist, which he does, he probably has some things that could hurt people and he thinks he's going to try to help them, but it's going to end up bad. My favorite song is Death to the Angel of Death because I like to watch myself in this old video that we made in a lot with electrical cords across the street to a shop plugged in in the lot at night with lights set up and uh, I did this really cool metal move with a pick and I licked my finger and the tongue thing and everyone still brings that up to me and when I see it I'm like that's so cool I should have way more chicks than I do but I just don't it's been great I hope it never ends and it probably won't and I also hope it ends and it probably won't and everybody have a great 20th anniversary it's been fun and it's not going away. I'm Billy Ricky, and I portray Dr. Ivan Stroganoff, whose sole purpose in the cog is to play keyboards and building the inventions that Dr. Pinkerton designs. And that explains the failure rate, because vodka and stupid don't mix. I was actually building props for the Cox Cable Show, and when they found out I could play keyboards, they asked if I want to play in the band, and I'm like, oh, okay. And the rest is history, or future, or... Welcome back, everybody, to Mighty Con's After Party. I'm Dr. Pinkerton, as usual, and we would like to welcome to the stage... Oh, quiet, I'll get you later. All right, welcome to the stage, America, no, the world's premier paranormal investigative band, The Tomb of Nick Cage!
favorite thing ever and this song is about your sister it's called your sister is a werewolf your sister
Okay, so somewhere in this room, we have hidden the Declaration of Independence. Half of one because the other half fell out. We have not been careful with the Declaration of Independence. But half of it is here, somewhere in this room, and the first person to steal the Declaration of Independence for us gets a free t-shirt or CD or something over at the merch table. Half, half so look around. Sean generally hides it. Sometimes he hides it, obviously. Sometimes he hides it in a place that we don't find it until two years later when we return to the bar, which that has happened before. Huh? Yeah, or we forget it, so because nobody ever finds it. But look around the room, half of the Declaration of Independence, bring it to us. Okay, so anyway, uh, I have trouble remembering things, probably because I'm a government experiment, and so are you, we all are. And I know everybody's like, hey, you know, no, man, it's fine, it's, they're trustworthy. Okay, well, all right, so that's why I forget things. It's not because I'm forgetful, just so you know. But this song is about untrustworthy stuff, and it's called MK Ultra. Do you have a Okay. All right. Well, we had a sample for that, and Sean said we're not going to do the sample because the CIA is listening. What? It's too long. Okay. This song's called MK Ultra. Not today, Fed. Good. This 
this next song here that we're about to play is about the movie that started it all. I'm not supposed to walk in front of that. Move it, Filbert. Jeez. And this, that movie is Vampire's Kiss. Has everybody seen Vampire's Kiss? Thank you. Somebody in here is a, like a cool human being. Look, I'm, I'm about to have some feedback again. I'm messing up the whole camera situation and everything tonight. All right, so this next song is a song that started it all. It's about our favorite Nicolas Cage movie, and uh, who actually has a tomb already in St. Louis, number one cemetery, um, with Marie de Laveau and a lot of New Orleans dignitaries. So if you haven't gone to see that, definitely go take a tour. It's very interesting. But this song is about Nicolas Cage and how he's immortal and hopefully will continue to do movies forever. So this one is called Vampire's Kiss. Nailgun Massacre.
Carpenters, they live. Like going back to the whole conspiracy thing. We're going back to they live. Probably my favorite Carpenter movie, but it's really hard. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. Well, I'm just. Huh? Oh yeah, that's right. We have glasses, special glasses, so you can see aliens all around you over the table. We have some that are plain, some that have bats on them. Uh, somebody George was wearing some earlier, but anyway, we have those over the merch table later on. But um, go get yourself some special drinks right here. Come up here, come up here. Come up here. These are the special alien glasses with the bats on the front so you can be spooky and goth and, and, like, and cool like George. Rebellious. All right, get out of here. Okay, so anyway, this one is called They Live. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Hey, not anybody 
microphone of <laughs> desire. Oh, I didn't know that's what that was. I'm sure you've reversed the effects of that microphone. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Nobody has any desire ever again. Do, no do you want to sing this next one with me? I have no idea what we're doing. Great. This one is also about werewolves. I like werewolves. They're scary. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I'm married to science. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, this one's about werewolves. I never got an answer to my question, but how you doing? Oh, that's good looking. That's good. Is that your new waist? If I could just get him a little, a little higher. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's like the old oh. days. Yeah, <laughs> get it up in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that that'll that'll be enough, Gilbert. Thank you. Unless you want to stay up here. Hey, well, let's just do the werewolf song. I don't know what's happening. Do All right, let's do it. This one is called Rougarou, and he's got to pull on your toes. This one's from Corey, because he's down to buy it.
an idiot of mine trying to ruin the show. Tomb of the Cage, I command you to do two more. Well, I guess we have to. The only thing more powerful than Dr. Pigerton are the old ones. And so we're gonna do a song for them. Tonight is a very auspicious night. Not only is there an eclipse with a black moon, but there's also Walpurgis Noct. It is halfway to Halloween this Eve. So who knows, anything could happen. So this next one is, uh, well all I have to say about this one is Cthulhu Fatagan. Thank you, baby Cthulhu. Anyway, this is our last one for the night. And this one 
is because it's auspicious, auspicious Walpurgis Noct. We are now halfway to Halloween, but not all scary things are paranormal. Scum, some sc scum, <laughs> some scary things are human. Like sometimes you get behind the keyboard, you mean good intentions, you post something, you think it's like, oh, this is a sweet little thing, who could get mad at this? And then everybody gets mad at it, I don't know what it is anymore. But when you get out in cyberspace, remember, you know who you are, you know who you are. And I love you, and you guys are the true magic tonight. Yes, thank you. My star babies, I love you all. So go forward and spread that magic, I love you. But this one is about when people aren't so nice, and it's called The Crucible.
Almost there. Yes, Dr. Pinkerton? Lab girl, I have need of your services immediately. Report to conference room seven at once. Right away, Dr. Pinkerton. As if you were more important than cold fusion. I am, and if you're going to snark, please be so kind as to do so after you've turned off the intercom. Right. This is so going in my report. Pinkerton's probably going to announce his next blunt. Uh, uh, our next plan. Ten bucks says it's another Pinker stink burger. <laughs> Good afternoon. Allow me to introduce a man who truly needs no introduction. If you don't need an introduction, why am I doing this? Because you can't work the cockdamned intercom properly. A giant in the field of science, blah, blah, blah. Towering intellect, blah. A man of great density. Destiny. Destiny. And <coughs> eventual ruler of the universe, Dr. Milo Thaddeus Pinkerton III. Now then, my fellow scientists, ladies, gentlemen, and members of the worldwide press, thank you for attending today's symposium. Uh, I thought you said there was going to be food. Yeah. Now then, as you all know, the motto of the cog is, out with the old and in with the new. Uh, Dr. Pinkerton, I thought it was taking over the world one brain at a time. I, I thought it was free brains and dead bodies. I thought it was, you must be this tall to ride this attraction. What? Well, it would explain Pinkerton's shoes. Uh, silence! Now then, after reviewing the performance of the cog in the last few months, I've come to the inescapable conclusion that a change will be necessary. Oh, boy. This can't be good. Uh, Dr. Pinkerton, I'm sure it's not as bad as all that. Oh, yes. I've been lenient for far too long. It is time for me to take drastic action. It is time for you three to come up with an effective plan. Oh, excellent. I can do that. Oh, I, I, I thought you were going to hurt us. Don't be silly, Dr. Arachnid. I would never do that! Now, you three must enter the COG Theater, review these scientific short subjects, and come up with a new invention. This sounds awfully fishy. Mm, quiet, you uppity automaton! Now then, enter the COG Theater! 
Andante! Vamos! I know what you're up to. I've seen this before on TV. You're gonna make us watch the worst crap you can find and then experiment on our brains. Well, I ain't going. I need you in there, Trumbot. I'll be monitoring out here, and somebody has to keep those two fools in line inside there. Yeah? Well, I ain't the droid you're looking for. Move along. You'll be helping me torture two sentient beings. <laughs> Why didn't you say so? Let me at them. Excellent. Hey. Seven. Good thing Pinky selected a new film for us to watch here. It would be a good thing if you paid attention, Drumbot. Now then, your experiment for today is a little slice of celluloid Limburger entitled A is for Atom. And B is for bad. C is for crap. And D is for the dollars that I wasted. Oh, I am already a true board man. Uh, guys, there's something about this arrangement that just doesn't seem Shh, right. Shh, the movie's about to start. Yeah. Oh, look, fireworks! The atomic age was born. Ooh. Ooh. There is ah. Since that moment, the shadow of the atom bomb has been across all our lives. What did he say? The shadow of some <laughs> fat mom. <laughs> Look, it's a UN. <laughs> Goodwill. <laughs> I see now. It's a comedy. Hmm. No effect so far. Let's raise the level of video activity, shall we? But wisdom demands, too, that we take time to understand this force. May the because force be with you! And also with you! To a dream as old as man himself. I'm the huge! The of limitless power at man's command. And where was it science found that giant? In the Percival Edge? In the atom. Oh! A particle so infinitely small that it takes over a hundred billion billion atoms to make up the head of a pin. Just as other millions and quadrillions billions of atoms, of atoms, blocks, atoms are free. Which make up everything in the world. Ships, and shoes, and sealing wax. And uranium, and, and plutonium, and a partridge in a pear tree. What a load of jabberwock! This is never going to work. They're too used to this sort of thing. I'll have to start over with some fresh test subjects. Dr. Pinkerton. You have an incoming call. Can't you see I'm in the middle of important research computer? Do you remember what happened the last time you ignored an incoming call? Mm, go ahead and answer the phone. Ah, oh, Dr. Morgus, to what do I owe the pleasure? All right, Pinkerton, I've been watching this. You're not going to get away with it. I'm warning you. You underestimate me, Dr. Morgus. With this new scheme, the minds of millions of miserable morons will be mine to manipulate. Wait a minute, Pinkerton. You're not going to get away with this. Because I'm going to put a stop to it. What, a fumbling fool like you? I'd like to see you try. In fact, I dare you. I double dare you. <laughs> Man, is it also the instruments? Dude, it's the instruments. Let's go to CNM Music Center. Starting a band? Then you need new instruments. CNM Music is where you need to go for everything that rocks. Check out our huge selection of guitars, drums, basses, keyboards, even lights and PA equipment. Make CNM Music your one stop for all your band's needs. CNM Music is located at 2515 Williams Boulevard in Kenner. See MusicCenter.net for other locations. And if you tell them in Great Flat Scene sent you, you get 10% off of a bag of strings. What happens to it? It explodes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. So, gentlemen, what do you think? I think somebody owes me 10 bucks. Yeah, I hate these old films. They're so drab and boring. Yeah, but at least this one's in color. And it's not a gag musical. What do you mean? Well, The most uh... boring of Bollywood musicals is at least a singing and dancing extravaganza. It's more like singing and dancing excrement. <laughs> Even that would be better than some old schlock with a cheesy fake cardboard box robot. I hate old movies! Enough! Experimenting on you three is a complete waste of time! We need a new test subject. One who is not yet jaded by the rigors of life. Somebody innocent. Carefree. And not Filbert! Come on, ring. Ah, uh, ring! Oh, come on! Oh, jeez! Father 
Chicago. Well, if we can't use Filbert, what are we going to do? Put it out of the paper, go to a recruiting drive, look under the rock, I don't care. Just get me that test subject. Well, we better get someone fast. Uh, Jumpbot, what's going on tonight? Well, there's a show tonight at One-Eyed Jack's. Hey, I, I like the way that looks. Rock City Morgue. Huh. Check out their lead singer, Rick Slave. Bet we could boss him around real easy. <laughs> Since 1993, Fun Rockin' is New Orleans' wackiest gift store. With tin toys, greeting cards, magnets, books, jewelry, belt buckles, Hello Kitty, Superhero, Wizard of Oz, and collectible horror merchandise. All the stuff you want. We've got the largest selection of vintage, retro, and New Orleans-themed iron-on t-shirts. And Fun Rockin' specializes in creating custom t-shirts while you wait. Check out both locations. 3109 Magazine in the Garden District and 1128 Decatur Street in the French Quarter. Fun Rockin'! All right, that's it. Thanks. Sounds great. All right, well, everything's set up for the show tonight. All right, well, I'll see you about an hour, about yeah. show time. Yeah. All right, man. Sounds great. Cheers. Later. Later. Why, hello there, young man. We represent the Scientist Clearinghouse. You've won the grand prize, one gazillion dollars. I don't remember entering any clearinghouse. Ah, uh, wait a minute. What did you say your name was again? I didn't say. There it is, right here. I didn't say. That's the name we have. Come, come. Come with us. Wait a minute. You guys aren't from any sweepstakes. You're those mad scientists that are trying to take over the world. Ooh, he's a bright boy. You better get him back to the lab before he blinds us all with more brilliant insight. Ow! Oh, it's gonna be so nice to get a new victim. I've got plans all set up for him in Baghdad when Pinkerton's done with him. Wait a minute, I want this victim. You got the last one. That last victim doesn't count! He was so stupid he couldn't find the detonator! That's not my problem. I need this one for my evocation spell. And I'm all out of interns. Evocation? You only use those to pick up chicks! Uh, hey!
my mustache. Ah, it'll be okay. Well, it will be for us anyway. It'll hurt less if you don't struggle so much. Listen, I demand to know what's going on. Ah, uh, please be coming down, sir. Yeah, we only want you to watch a movie. All right, I, I get it. This is some kind of focus group. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, let's go with that. All right, well, you guys need to uh, work on your volunteer program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come, come get my people way. right on it. Yeah. Right here. Gee, what a winner. I guess they picked the right volunteer. Welcome to the Video Sonic Configuration Utility. Do you wish to configure the video activity matrix? Select next to continue. Yes, yes, next. Do you wish to input a password into the matrix? Next! Password selected. Oh, come, damn it! Deep breaths, Dr. Pinkerton. Yeah. Labco, is my cold fusion reactor ready yet? My reactor is going online now. There, I've routed to the power grid so you should have all the power you could possibly want. Hmm. Excellent! Dr. Pinkerton, I still don't see what you hope to accomplish with this. Ah, well, observe my shapely subordinate. With the proper infusion of video activity, the test subject will become highly susceptible to suggestion once the proper code word is spoken. If they can be controlled by anyone, how does that help us? And why do you need my cold fusion reactor? Well, with the aid of THE fusion reactor, it will be me they recognize as their lord and master. <laughs> Ah, excellent. Uh, test subject. <laughs> yeah. Am I getting paid for this? Don't worry, you'll get whatever's coming to you. <laughs> Ooh, popcorn. You see, we'll be monitoring your brain waves during the screening. So feel free to say whatever thoughts happen to flash across your synapses. Uh, Dr. Z, escort our guest to the theater. <laughs> Come right, right, right this way, sir. Yes, you see my mystical minion? All the little pieces are falling right into play. What? You have another incoming call. Can't you see I'm trying to subjugate an entire planet here, computer? The planet isn't going anywhere, Dr. Pinkerton. Very well. This is a second warning, Pinkerton. Your day is past, Dr. Morgus. Very soon, the entire world will be marching to the beat of a new robotic drummer. <laughs> Don't make me come down, there. Don't make me press the little button. What button? The off button. I should put him on ice for a while. Uh, Dr. Pinkerton! Please, you really don't want to upset Dr. Marcus. He's a very powerful scientist with very powerful allies. That old fool, he's not even worth enslaving. Mm. Get back to work, you dolt! Morons! I'm surrounded by morons! Is this you? Does your reality have you down and bored? Well then, get up and come on over to More Fun Comics. Check out our great inventory of new and collectible comics, trade paperbacks, hard-to-find action figures, t-shirts, and tons of other cool stuff. We are located at 8200 Oak Street, just one block off of Carrollton Avenue, only 10 blocks from Loyola and Tulane. That's More Fun Comics, 8200 Oak Street. And remember, we always have more fun at More Fun Comics. Hey, watch it! Excuse me, pardon me. Hey! Sorry! What? Sorry! Not in front. Totally, what is this? Did I miss anything good? Ah, uh, just another episode of Faulty Towers. Oh, goody. Microvanian Embassy. Microvania, microbus, microbudget. Guards, arrest that man. Charge him with treason. He should make a good target for the firing squad. What is this? It's a really bad movie, so just shut up, read your lines. Please, please, what is uh, this? He should be executed for criminally bad dubbing. Tell Marshal Spitzfu to report to me in the courtyard. Be quick about it! Because the bathroom is out of the question. You. Where is Raise your arm if you're sure. No, Lieutenant Bikla! Meet me in the fire escape. Rita, what is this flower doing in my stoop? <laughs> the answer would be the backstroke, sir. Lieutenant Spitzfu! Ah. Do you want? It's Lily Christine, the cat lady. We'll make yourself presentable and report to me in the courtyard immediately. Presentable by what? <laughs> by taking more clothes off. Oh yes. <laughs> hey. Good night. Okay, hey Dolph, it's your turn. 
And as long as your enemy looks exactly like Jim Belushi, then you'll be fine. Still no reaction? Huh. Let's see how they like it when I crank the video activity up to 11. I don't feel so good. My visit to America was even more successful than I ever anticipated. Uh, Joe Camel called. He wants his toes back. Hey, you don't have an aspirin, do you? But you know, no, no aspirin. I had a terrible headache. I'm not sure what oh. it's caused by that. Are you okay? Uh, Mr. Slave? Mr. Slave? Uh, this doesn't look quite so good. Uh, Dr. Pinkerton. Well, what is it? I think we may have a problem here. Uh, I think he's broken. What kind of diagnosis is that? Be more specific. Well, uh, his vital signs are strong and steady. But his psyche's in full retreat. Excellent. This is just the development I was looking for. Return him to where you found him, and I shall work on the data we've collected. Okay. Okay. Upsy daisy, sunshine. Time to go. Come on, big fella. He's a lot heavier than he was before. Roadkill. Yes. It is I. I've returned to rock you all till your brains are squished to one micron thick. I'm going to measure it later. But first, I'm going to turn it over to our own Trumpa. I'm a rock and roll 
control of this sector. Yes, you know I've been spending the last half of a year out in deep space, abducting bands for grisly experiments, and I've only failed one or two times, but you weren't watching then. <laughs> anyway, I've returned to Earth to see whether my absence has caused any positive changes, because we don't want any positive changes. We must nullify them. <laughs> First thing, Dr. Z, how is that android woman project of yours coming? Okay, it's an android. Uh, until Filbert went in there and started messing with the android woman. Yeah, Filbert, ever since we got you back. I didn't touch the female android again. <sighs> Obviously, I've no idea. He only did it the two times. Let me describe the android and we'll see who's been guilty of tampering. I'm sure you've seen her. She's about yay high and about yay wide. heart, metal form, check that voltage and get her on. Android woman, engineered, sector free, android woman, she's got Oh, 
All right. So, we can mark negative on the android woman. Now, what about the question of death? Has anyone cured that? I'm thinking not. Uh, yeah. I haven't quite that. cured yeah, death. Somehow yet. you've avoided death all these years. I have avoided it. I haven't cured it. I think you've got to deal with death, if you ask me. But you know what I say? I say death to the angel of death! And then you say, ah! I wonder. Anybody? Uh, Any games come out worth noting? Not really, no. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> In fact, none will ever beat the best game of them all. Which one's that, Dr. Brickett? I'm not going to tell you until the end of the song. <laughs>
I believe that's the next topic, Dr. Z. Uh, yes, well, uh, we've been uh, importing a whole bunch of fentanyl across the southern border, and, uh -huh. uh, and we've been packaging it in these little pills. Pills? Yes. Uh, How but, do you uh, administer it? Do you well, shove well, the pill into the eye? Well, well the problem is we, we, we're not really sure. Or maybe pound it into the skull with a hammer. Well, we're not really sure which of the pills actually You know, I don't think any of them do anything at all. They might as well be placebos. <laughs> that's exactly what I was saying. You wake up in the morning and you're feeling kind of ill So you go to see the doctor to get some kind of a pill And the doctor looks at you and says it's all up in your head And he hands you a prescription and tells you to go to bed Think the medicine he gave you was a hoax In the condition you are in you don't have time for stupid jokes Please tell me what the hell this is I am If I had wanted sugar pills I would have gone out trick or treating Placebo Wake up the next morning feeling worse, just out of batter And you realize that the pills the doctor had enclosed a letter Stating that you shouldn't take these pills with food or drugs or beer And you're thinking that it's time to end this medical career Is it fraud or just malpractice? No, it's both! It's a hypocrisy against the very Hippocratic oath Now you're not just sick, you're also quite annoyed! The of this treatment is to put you all in
Don't you look forget that dog a big piece of your mind And then suddenly you feel a quaver to the door behind Everybody's staring at you as you charge across the floor And straight in the direction of the nearest western door When you barge into the bathroom, there's your dog! He's got some news for you that nearly puts you in a state of shock He says he's got some different pills he wants to give you Because it wasn't a placebo, it was lax Ah! Uh, They're not pogoing. Why aren't they pogoing? We are testing out an audio sound waves upon you all. You're, you're supposed to start pogoing right then and all right. Well, they could just start a match instead. Is there something more energetic? Is there a liquid they should be drinking before coming here? Well, uh, the Vikings used to drink the bovine lactations. You don't mean. Yes. Milk? Yes, of course. Why? Why, some of the most evil and city overlords of all time have chugged milk. That's right. Even the fierce Viking Rangers of all drink gobs of the stock. Attack! <laughs> the battle hall. For the time to say. Before the break of day, light comes to the east. In the morning, east, with tears of battle song, with the fast of dawn, with milk, 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 pass around the hall, milk, 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 keep the battle call, milk, 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 the first to die, milk, 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 there's milk in your eye, the wretched. Prepare for battle Some no will to the flag on We march to slay the dragon made after Saw me on his flash My son will not Until that time we're joyful With no little joy With no milk, 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 milk Children while you can Milk, 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 the sun will reach. Ah! The battle will remember. The elders will remember. In Valhalla, the hills will roll. The glory will bring it up. Milk, 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 milk. Pass it down the hall. Milk, 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 milk. The battle will call. Shut it. Milk, 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 milk. Toast the first to die. Milk, 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 milk. Here's the game in your eye. Yeah, milk, milk. I'm sure if you if you go to the bartender and ask them for a drink with milk in it, they could certainly provide that for you. Ooh. And that would be a what? Well, there's many uh, drinks that have uh, cream or milk in them. There's a grasshopper, mm. and there's a fuzzy navel. Mm. I mean, there's a whole, a whole list of them. It's all the cream drinks. You know, there is only one known drink eviler than the white Russian right now. The grasshopper? No, the green slime! The green slime? Yes! The what? Ah! Answers to people. You believe in when you will find something screaming across your mind. It's green slime. Yeah. What could it be? What is the reason? It's just the end of all that's beautiful. Put just something in your head. Would 
you believe in when you're dead It screams fly Now dig this Man has gazed into space in wonder For thousands of years Sometimes hoping that life could be elsewhere Open the door and you'll find the sea you go To find the answer is the key you go You'll believe it when you're fine Something screaming across your mind It screams Nothing is funkier than the green slime. Oh, well, I can think of a few things that are more funky than green slime. What? Like what? Well, I am more funky than green slime. Without a doubt. Don't you see, everybody? Well, hello, ladies. You are looking so fine. Well, hello, ladies. Well, sweet goodbye. Well, hello, ladies. You are looking so sweet. By the end of this song, you are the taste of all my meat. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, oh, yeah, 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 and then we can be a fucking Oh yeah, fucking fresh. Break it down. Just let yourself go. Just let yourself go. And we let out a move. They're all in this pocket. And the man in me. The spell will set you free. And they will think that I see. Because I am very funny. Oh, yeah, for me, friend. And then you can be a fucker, 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 a
The one and only incomparable Dr. Z. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. He is monkey fresh. I mean, um, funky. Yes, yeah. he's very, very funky. Yeah. Well, all right. We're checking off things off our bucket list here. these two guys are ready, we're all right. They're ready for anything. But are you ready for... Are they ready to get in each other's pouches? Are you ready for vamp pirates? Hmm? Yeah. You're not ready. You're not ready for vamp pirates. You can recognize them coming out of the fog, much like this one, by the docks. And you can hear their song. It goes a little something like... Rum, tickety, dum, dum, 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 rum, tickety, d
Heart of metal, heart of metal, heart of metal. Ah, 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 ah. Born to perish, to perish, darling. The warrior is made a loud he cry. I have a mallet. He held it in the air. He got his helmet and he shook out his long hair. It was I. Mallet of metal, mallet of metal, mallet of metal, ah, of metal, mallet of metal, a mallet of metal, ah, 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 Get the metal now and now and see what it can do And burn it by the light and bludgeon Break your bones yeah. Give it up for the mallet! <laughs> Give it up for Gilbert Snodgrass <clears throat> Right! Moving on What about the subject of zombies. You know, they were very popular a short ways back with The Walking Dead. But somehow, things zombie, went awry. Zombie, what happened? Uh, what happened? See, I, the Irish they... girl, she sings about the zombies. The zombie. Zombie, zombie. Oh, the, 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 the zombie song with the, with the Irish That's girl. 30 years ago, Dr. Z. I'm thinking of something more current. The zombie apocalypse barbecue, people. Doesn't that make your stomach just start to turn? Yeah! Well, the the gal is going to spin. Cause everyone in town had just arrived. Folks were throwing on the grill, everything that they could kill. And a couple of cleaners that were still alive. Square down! The meat was running down, and army folks from out of town. Showed up and started bossing us around. Everyone should leave, and now this won't believe the dead were up and crawling from the ground. Around. I said, hang on right here. I just had a great idea. We'll have a zombie apocalypse barbecue, and I'll save a couple ribs for you. Whether or not you're related, you'll be thankful that you made it this year. Zombie apocalypse barbecue. More square! Dance more squarely! I command it! Yes! The zombie started gathering and his bill began to slatter it. The sauce on which he built a family name. But when all the zombies got him, so my sister up and shot him in the head and then she dumped him in the flame. By the time we started packing up, the zombies were attacking us. They bit me and they caused a mess of pain. But I heard a zombie say as my life just slipped away. Your brain. I said, why not just never? That sauce makes everything better at the zombie apocalypse barbecue. Well, even if you don't survive, be it brains and chicken wings, barbecues went up and things to make you smile just to be alive. At the zombie apocalypse barbecue, we'll soon rack our ribs for you. Whether or not you deserve it, everybody will get served out at that zombie apocalypse. Woo! Not bad, not bad. You can improve the square dancing though for next time. All right. Now it is time for me to introduce our very own Dr. Dylan Winchester, who's been hiding there in the corner. She's been working on her own dances. I believe you told me the other day, girls want to have guns, right? Yes, but they also like to have a little bit of fun. Fun? Just a little bit. Tell us all about it. Oh, <laughs> 
Dr. Dylan Winchester. You'll be hearing a lot more from her very soon. All right. But first, I think it's time for a little frozen treat, don't you? Oh, stall? Okay. <clears throat> yes, it's getting rather hot in here, and I suppose we could either doff our dossier here, or we could serve up some ice cream. Well, I'm just afraid if we take off our lab coats, all the girls will go crazy. You wouldn't want that to happen. Little dip, little dip. They would tear you to shreds, Philbert. Now I remember what happened last time. I prefer to think of ice cream. That's right. Cold, refreshing, creamy, chocolatey, filled with concentrated evil from the black forest of Dusseldorf. That's right. It's cold and it's cold. Ice cream! We're going to need lots more smoke for this one. Yeah! Oh, 
what more is there to do? But to spread. In shrines, it shrines. I scream, I scream. You scream, we all scream for ice cream. The most intensive case I have ever felt. Such a bitter waste as it starts to melt. Is this real or merely a dream? No way to be sure as I start to scream I scream when I am all alone I scream to stagger in her pain I scream the screaming never stops I scream with chocolate sprinkles on top I scream with such a creamy treat I scream it's always good to eat I scream, I scream until I'm done I scream, it's always so much fun I scream I see you like ice cream as much as we do Sorry, Dr. Pinkerton. What? Everyone out there was screaming, and I got afraid. I'm scared. There are many more things to be afraid of than that. <laughs> Mike, no, just this last year. There's really nothing to be afraid of but fear itself. Oh, there's fear of disease. Why, the Black Plague could be loose in this very room. No, 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 that, that was eradicated centuries the ago. What? The what? The Black Plague! Listen up. Time for a little history lesson. In the squalor of the latter half of the 10th century, pestilence ravaged the land. No one was safe. That king, the baron, knight, the peasants going in the fields. It was a time of death. It was a time of the black plague. For the world was a sense the king. Not afraid of any living thing. But Kennedy, much in a heart. Oh, man. Suddenly, he catches the plague. Ah, 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 the Black Plague! What's the battlefield I crawl? My bones are against the wall! Do I have to scream and beg? Oh my god, it's crawling on my leg! Ah! The Black Plague! No! 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 Go! Go! From city to city, the Black Plague spread its tendrils of doom. Must have the hammer. London to Paris, millions fell dead, 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 dead. Spread by the vile rats, which even now are creeping up behind each and every one of you out there to disembowel you with their long claws and eviscerate you with sharp, pointed teeth. To go will be your hair. Soon your brain begins to rot and then your arms fall off. You know what you've got? Black plague! Ah, black plague! Ah, the black plague! All the signs in the end is near. The dread coming has reappeared. Headless corpses roam the land. Cancel your vacation plans. Why? You got the plague! Ah, black plague! Ah, black plague! And thank you for coming out here when you could be doing something infinitely more cultured and refined than this. Mm. Shall we test them to see how unrefined they have become? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we'll, but we'll need uh, someone out of the audience. Yes. Uh, dare we plug that thing in? It might be the reason that the uh, wall went out of power. What? 
Yeah, the, the, the Sonic Mind Probe, I think it's shorted. It's shorted? I think so. So we've got to just, just go We could risk it, of course. Of course. Yeah, that, that, Is it worth the risk? Well, sure, why not? <laughs> this could be the end of the show. <laughs> that's okay. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to take the risk. Nurse Winchester, I mean Dr. Winchester. All right. Dr. Winchester. Ready the Sonic Mind Probe. What? The Sonic, Sonic Mind Probe. That's right. Over there is the Sonic Mind Probe, the device by which we will extract and examine wait, 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 somebody's wait, brain. The, 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 the oh, yes, it's, it's on wheels, of course. You could just lift it up. Yes, uh, there, Philbert. Don't let it crush you. All right. We need a volunteer from the audience. Um, Dr. Winchester, go don't and select worry, somebody. Don't worry, I got it. Don't worry, Philbert's yes, don't, got don't it. Don't drop it too much, Dr. Oh, Philbert. Philbert! Philbert! Stop leaning it. That is a bad idea, Philbert. Don't do that. The whole thing is a bad idea. But of course, we are a bad idea. We are evil, ladies and gentlemen. We are not those good doctors who you've seen on TV. We are the evilest of the evil. And uh, right now, I am in search of a plug with a circuit breaker on it, just in case. With a circuit breaker on it, just in case. Okay. All right. I, we're going okay, to see so, what happens here. So, so she's going to have to get down on her knees. Looks like it's working. All right. <clears throat> Proving thusly that it was not the fault of the Sonic Sonic Mind Mind that the power went out over there. All right. Now then. Uh, where's the uh, bench that we can place the subject upon so and situate her comfortably beneath the cold steel barrel of the Sonic Sonic Mind Mind Pro? Yes, that will do. That will do. A bit flimsy, don't you think? Does anyone out there have a better... No, oh, never mind. All right. There. Now then. <clears throat> Dr. Winchester, seat the subject suitably beneath the Sonic Sonic Mind. 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 Bro, bro. Bro. Should be more comfortable on our knees. No, 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 no. Just raise up the Sonic Sonic Pro. It was designed thusly. And then, meanwhile, I'm going to detail a low-cost alternative that you can all employ in the privacy of your own home. Two, three, four. How are you feeling? Are you feeling comfortable? Hello? And, and have you been using your brain lately? Not really. Excellent. <laughs> Now then, are you ready? Are you prepared? Is anyone ever truly prepared when they experience their first wow, bow, tow, my low, bow, tow, my? Stress, fear of failure, knowledge, exact questions. Answers, responses, rhetoric, rhetoric, low, bow, tow, nigh, low, bow, tow, nigh. A small part of you wants to die, for both of you who wishes to live. There must be a solution to this problem for some advice that I'm happy to give the source of your consternation. It's buried deep inside of your head. Get rid of the defective part of yourself. You'd be a lot happier if you were brain that low. No, 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 Oh, look at that, it's coming out. It's, it's, it's a perfect specimen! <laughs> Power! Pressure! Presence! Where's the statue of Politicians on the left! Politicians on the right! Politicians on the left! And 
Politicians on the right could use a slow, go, tow, my low, go, tow, my! Oh, there's your brain. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Smash! Take a nice sharp object. A number two pencil will do. Ram it up your nose just as far as it goes. The pain goes away in an hour or two. You'll wake up in a whole new frame of mind. And then you'll have your life in me. Say, now you'll be just as happy as me. You just get yourself a lobotomy. Low, bow, show, my, low, bow, show. all learned something tonight. <laughs> Never meddle with someone as mad as I. <laughs> what? That's right, Dr. C. They said I was mad. Who <coughs> did? They! They said I was mad! Do you think I'm mad? Yeah! 
It is not I who am crazy. It is I who am. Yes, think about. Yes, thank you. Such cultural learning, Philbert. These people are absorbing high culture. Yeah, it's kind of like a guy smacking another guy on the ass. Not exactly. Yeah. It's more like being high. That's what he said. All right. But I think the alpha sonic waves have permeated their cerebellums. And I think that every one of them has become infected with our audio sonic waveforms. And I think that very soon they will all bow to me. All will sing with glee In the future we're going to be much rejoicing In the future all will bow to me Robot, what has happened? Oh well, get up now! In the future all will be happy In the future all will sing with me In the future there will be much rejoicing In the future all will bow to me There never will be any problems There never will be any choice No dissent or discontent And there will only be one voice So bow to the Kong Bow to the Kong Bow to me Bow to the Kong Bow to me and bow right now for the C-O-G Kowtow to the God Bow to the God Praise to me Bow to the God Praise to me On your knees if you please For the C-O-G I've got a plan in mind for you Quit your job, don't go to school Break your bones to build that tree You're a tiny gear in a big machine I've got what you want And I know what you need I've got ideas between my ears That would make your brain bleed So, bow to the car Bow to the car Bow to me Bow to the car Bow to me And I'll bow right now for the C-O-G Cow to the car Bow to the car Praise to me Bow to the car Praise to me On your knees and you put for the C Oh, she advance and be nice. I will give you a higher purpose. I'll control your very soul. My will is yours, now do your chores Are be beaten by a pole But how will you learn to this meaning After I'm buried, dead and gone Well, I'll build an army of giant robots My evil plan will carry on So bow to the car Bow to the car Bow to me Bow to the car Bow to me And a bow right now for the C.O.G. Cow cow to the car Bow to the car Yes Praise to me, bow to the cog, praise to me, on your knees if you please, for the C, oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, it worked, Dr. Z. Philbert, you said I would never succeed in winning over this crowd. And Dr. Winchester, I, I think this proves everything your done. research has concluded. All right, how would you rate this? We're about to do the last one of the night, so how would you rate this on a scale of birthday party to science party. Go, go, go! Hey! Let's have a, a science party! Science party in the lab 
the toy, the one night at the lab. Everybody's there. Doctors, professors, PhDs, scientists with yellow hair. So we're pulling up. Sedatonic powered Cadillac. Well, geniuses with the matching lab coats. They're carrying a portable telescope. Ta da! Come up to one of us afterwards. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Come again. <laughs>